Hey, what's up everybody? Frankie Slauson here, and welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show. And I'm sure you guys have been wondering why I haven't been making many videos lately, uh, actual video videos. Well, basically because I've been focusing on uh, doing a lot of interviews, as you, if you've been paying attention, if you've been following me online, or on Facebook, or on YouTube, you know that I've been, I've had the privilege of doing, since the last time we've spoke, and since the last time I ever did a, a video be prior to the video I made uh, when my buddy, my buddies Mike and, K uh, and Cody went to with me to, or I went with them, or we went, all went together to the Sanford Center in Bemidji, Minnesota for the TNA wrestling event, which I'll talk about a little bit here. Uh, I had the privilege of doing some interviews with, uh, well, I want you to check these out. I'll put some of the links down below, uh, down below anyway of this video. Uh, I did an interview with Timmy D, which you probably don't know who that guy is. So he's not really a, a mega superstar or anything like that, but he's he's somebody who has a passion for pro wrestling. And there's nothing wrong with having a passion for that. He's a color commentator for uh, uh, development, or for a, a wrestling, a pro wrestling company called Anarchy Wrestling out of, out of Atlanta, Georgia. And he's been doing that for quite, for a couple of years now, and uh, he, he loves it, so hey, and it was fun to talk to, and our, in this interview we talked pretty much basically all about pro wrestling, and all the events that we, some of our favorite moments from wrestling, some of our favorite superstars, about current wrestling, about wrestling from the past, and whatever, and, and what we what we think will happen in the future, uh, and then uh, just recently, a couple weeks ago, I had the privilege of doing a one-on-one -on -one interview with Yes, the man himself, Mr. Henry Thomas, the star of E.T. Next to the E.T. itself, Henry Thomas uh, played Elliot in uh, the movie E.T. and did a very good job. And that kind of was the movie that kind of jump-started his career. It was a big one anyway that kind of made him very famous at the time. And while he's not really maybe as famous anymore... But, you know, he still keeps on acting. If you go to his Wikipedia page and type in Henry Thomas, the actor, uh, you will find a lot of films that he's done over the, over the last course of 25, 30 years, ever since he was uh, a little kid. And uh, you got to realize this was 30 years ago uh, when E.T. came out. Life was a lot different back in those days. There was no, there was probably cameras that were just starting to come out as far as video cameras. But there was no, like, what I'm doing, recording on a handheld device here. A uh, little little camera. Toshiba camera. And life was, you know, movies were presented back in those days a lot differently. I mean, you couldn't really, you couldn't see a movie for free online back in those days. You had to pretty much pay to see any movie that was out on theater. Or you had to wait for the VHS tape to come out. Or if you were lucky enough to afford Laserdisc or something like that. Yeah, it was definitely a different time. Now, nowadays, we got it so much easier, and I'm not complaining. I'm happy with what we have now, but it's just that the thrill of of films isn't as thrilling as it used to be, you know. Or watching, well, I mean, it still kind of is when you watch it, but it's like you know, back in those days, it you know, things were it was harder to you were very limited by what you uh, what you could uh, watch and everything. But now you can watch pretty much anything you want. So, so I did an interview with Henry, and, and that interview did pretty well on YouTube. I mean, I'm still not where I want to be as far as uh, the views and the subscribers and everything. I mean, I, I don't know why I haven't gained like a, a thousand subscribers just off that one interview. Uh, I'll never figure that out. But anyway, it was it was fun nevertheless. And then recently I just did an interview about a little over a week and a half ago or so with an author, an award-winning author uh, named Kent Gustafson. And he wrote a book about the legendary life and times of Doc Watson. If any of you are familiar with, with Doc Watson. Now, I'm not really familiar with him. I'm a little bit more familiar with him now than I was uh, beforehand, before I did the interview. Because I learned a lot about him. And uh, if you guys want to learn about Doc Watson, check out that interview. Link is down below. So I've been kind of busy with that and doing the interviews. And I got a big interview coming up here that's going to be coming out on Christmas. As long as everything works or goes through like it's supposed to. We're supposed to do this, record this on Thursday. It's only Tuesday today. So hopefully everything will work out. A big interview. I'm not going to say who it is yet. Even though I kind of gave it away on my Facebook page. 
But to the YouTube audience, anyway, you're going to have to wait and find out. Or you might as well just check my Facebook page if you really want to know. It's somebody who's a, uh, who's a legend, who, whose father uh, was not around no more, but the, whose father became a legendary figure. And we're going to talk to this person, this father's, this legendary father's son, who also is kind of trying to keep his memory alive. And that's all I'll tell you. Some people already know who it is, but I'm sure a lot of you don't. But you'll just have to keep guessing, I guess. If you want to guess, guess below down, or down below in the comments until we, until the interview comes, um, uh, comes out this Monday for Christmas. And, uh... I, I do want to still do some more interviews. That's kind of my main thing. Now that I got this, especially since I got this audio recording software, I want to try to find as many people as I can. Anybody that has to do with entertainment. I'm not, I don't want to talk to farmers. I don't want to talk to teachers. I don't want to talk to stockbrokers or people who talk about, want to talk about the economy. No, that's not the type of interviews I'm... I'm not CNN. I'm not uh, Wolf Blitzer or whatever. Or uh, Bill O'Reilly. I want to talk to entertainers, people that have to do something with entertainment. So if you know of anybody that you know is on Facebook or whatever that is an entertainer that would be that you think would be cool to have me try to get on, uh, let me know and uh, send me a private message on Facebook. My Facebook will be page will be uploaded as well, or the web address. Let me know because I'm I'm willing to do just about anything. Uh, it, it's fun because I didn't think this was going to happen again. I, uh, if you guys remember back in July, I was contemplating leaving YouTube because I was very upset with the way I feel like I put a lot of effort into some of the videos that I've done, and yet I still get really nothing. But yet if it was a celebrity or somebody with a million subscribers doing the same thing that I would do, they get so many comments and so many subscribers. I'm still a little frustrated about that. But I got to think about, like, what can the, what can I do that would be a lot more exciting that I'm good at that you know while I'm not maybe the best editor and I'm not probably the best uh, vlogger ever but but I am a I try to be a pretty good entertainer if I can but what is the one thing that I know that I really could do well at that I used to do that was that kind of made me a success not so much financially but just the fact that I got to do this and it's always a memory that I will always have up here and that was interviews. And I know I'm not in a radio station or anything like that. I just, what I basically do is I, I'll show you how we do it, if you're kind of wondering. Sometimes, lately, it hasn't been on, on the webcam. If, it, it's, if it's on a webcam and we go do it through Skype, you know, we'll talk on, on, through Skype or whatever. And I'll sometimes point the, the camera to the, the screen, you know, to let, so that person knows that how I'm recording and everything. Sometimes, a lot of times they don't care how I, how I do it, you know. And remember, most of these people, you know, aren't as famous as they used to be, you know. So that's why it makes it a lot easier for me to, to do this. Uh, I have, I, you know, I've tried to get bigger, even bigger celebrities like uh, Larry the Cable Guy, but he's still a big star. And until his star kind of goes mediocre, I probably won't ever get a chance to talk to him. But anyway, so I just kind of do that, and then we talk to a microphone, you know. I got two microphones, one in this room and one in the other room, and just you know, just talk and whatever, and as if we were having a conversation. Now, <clears throat> if it's an audio interview, then I just get my, I just get my, hold on, I just get my audio recording software up that I have on the on my laptop, and then we just record it like we're at our studio, you know, pretty much. It sounds like we're just talking right next to each other, almost like. So it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing what what, uh, <clears throat> what the technology, what, what we can do, and expect more of this. You probably won't see many videos, video videos from me, just because I want to focus on interviews. I want to make it. I want to bring back like the radio format, which is just audio format, uh, stuff that's my own material, that's not copywritten or anything like that, that's not copywritten from the person that I'm uh, uh, interviewing or whatever. But I just, I, I just want to keep it going. Because that's the one thing that I know that I'm good at, and that makes everybody happy. Because uh, this year has been, this season has been a really good season. There's been no controversy at all or anything, which is quite nice. So, basically, I, I'm very pleased that this year, this year has really been, it's had its shares of ups and downs, but it's been a pretty good, overall it's been a pretty good year. <clears throat> you know, from uh, going to Astoria, Oregon, to uh, have 
being an uncle again for the second time in my life. Uh, my sister giving birth to her, her baby boy, Bentley. Uh, I can probably show you a picture of Bentley. You guys never got a chance to see what he looked like at all last time. Let's see. Let me see if I can find a picture here. I know I, I she has tons of pictures on her. There we go. There this is my nephew. My nephew who you've never seen before on camera yet. And you've never seen on when, when we met. Or when I mentioned to you about it uh, that time that um, we went to the... Uh, back this summer when he was born we went to their water park. But his name is Bentley Michael Thunheim and... He's now six months old already, over six months, and he's he's a he's a cutie. He's always happy. He's a happy baby, you know. I love him to bits, you know. He's very he's quite the kid, that's for sure. And maybe one day I'll put him on video on camera. He's never been on camera yet, but uh, I just wanted to give him some time, you know, since he's still a little baby. I know when when my first nephew was born, Isaac, I kind of wanted to get him on camera right away. It was it's, it's an exciting thing, you know. It's the first time our family is really... My family is a pretty small family, and, and any time we have any type of addition to it, it's kind of cool, you know. I'm not a parent, but, you know, it seems like since I've been living with mom and dad, anyway, that I feel like I've been part, partially a parent because of taking care of kids and everything. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's another story for another time. But I want to show you that picture since you haven't had a chance to see it. And this year has just been... You know, I was in my first ever parade. Uh, I didn't show any photos of that. Or, I should have brought the camera, but I didn't. I don't know why. I, I could have easily got away with it. It would have been fine. <clears throat> our work uh, got entered uh, our, our float into the parade. A parade like they do every year. And this year, I got to participate in that. And that was pretty fun. Our 4th of July parade that we normally have in Greenbush here absolutely sucked because of the bad weather and everything. And people thought it was going to be a tornado coming through town and everything. And... Yeah, but the parade in Roseau was actually quite exciting because it was the week of the fair and everything, so that was fun. And then just the little things, you know, like uh, this year was also my 10th year, uh, my 10th, or 10th anniversary or reunion, uh, class reunion, and that was all right. It was fun to see everybody. It was fun to uh, participate in, in so, seeing some people I have literally not seen in over 10 years. And also make up with some people that I, you know, when school ended, when I was 18 years old, and a lot younger than, you just think, just think 10 years ago, 2002, I was a different person back in those days, as I, to, you know, compared to what I'm like now, because I've, you know, the last 10 years I've, I've learned a lot about responsibility, I've learned a lot about maintaining myself, and, and not being so selfish, and, or greedy, some people might still think that I'm a selfish person, but I'm not really a selfish person. I'm a, I do a lot for people. I help out as much as I can. Uh, I, I'm not perfect, but in a, in any which way, but I'm not a bad guy either. You know, I'm, I can be I can be your friend. Probably the first day that we meet each other, you know, but it's just that back in those days, ten years ago, my attitude towards a lot of the students that I. You know, a lot of my fellow students were, was different because uh, they I used to get picked on a lot. And a lot of the picking was done by uh, the people who now we're friends with now. It's kind of funny how that kind of works after so much time. I mean, we're not close friends, but we're just, I, I wanted to make some peace anyway. That's why I wasn't sure if I was going to go to any of the, or participate in the uh, reunion at all. But I'm glad that I did because I, I got a chance to make up with some people and, and I, it, it was kind of nice to to do that, you know. It was it was great, and uh, and then you know this anything else that's happened this year uh, has been pretty exciting. We got to go and interview Terry Doolum. Uh, he's a local an news anchorman from, out of Grand Forks, North Dakota, for WDAZ. That was a fun experience, you know. And this all these interviews alone, you know, with everybody that I've had a chance to talk to, I I do appreciate it. If you guys are people that have watched me on Facebook or on Facebook or on YouTube, or that I'm friends with on Facebook and that I interviewed, I want to say thank you a lot to all of you because you guys made it possible for me to keep the YouTube channel going. Because if I, I, I think the thing is, if I wouldn't have done the YouTube, uh, these interviews, I don't think I would have done. I think I would have been done with YouTube. I know I said I would never leave my channel. I don't think I'd ever delete my channel. It'd still stay around. But now that I found something that I 
can keep going and, and, and I'm going to keep on doing it as long as I can and also interact that with vi original videos and original content as well uh, I think it was the best idea to, to keep to, to keep around but I, I would hope that some of you guys pay attention to some of the stuff that I do and actually comment on it and view it and you know give me some likes give me some you know give me some feedback I mean I'm not getting paid by any of this stuff but it's just that I put a lot of effort into a lot of stuff that I do and and I just hope that more people take notice to that I guess it's all that I'm hoping that's why I'm doing this too but anyway uh, this year has been a pretty good year and then of course kind of ending the year with going to TNA wrestling although it's the end of the year is and this is the end of the month in, in December here so it's been a, a pretty good year uh, next year my goals are going to be a lot different I don't know if we're going to be doing any vacations at all but I know that the one goal that I do have is to move to Grand Forks, North Dakota and finally get a job. So I will finally be moving out of my parents' house, finally. And I hope this time everything works out for good. That I don't become homeless again or don't uh, lose my job for any stupid reason. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I never thought, you know, I'd be 29 years old and still not sure where I am in life, you know. Because the things that I really love are what I'm doing right now. And if I could have made a living of doing this for the rest of my life, I would have done it. I, and I'd probably, put more, I'd probably put more effort into it than I have. You know, pretty much is what I'm saying. But anyway, uh, oh yeah. And just one thing I did want to show. When I went to Bemidji, uh, we had a good time. We got to meet a lot of different people. The experience about with TNA was fun. Uh, it was my second time going to a TNA wrestling event. The first time was back uh, March 20, Friday, March 25th, 2011 at the Alaire Center at Grand Forks. And this was my second time. Well, we got there pretty early. Uh, Mike and Cody and I left around 9.30 in the morning that Friday morning. I got to Bemidji about two and a half hours later. And the event didn't start until about 5 or 6 o'clock or 7 actually. But we wanted to get there early enough so we could do, you know, just to get there. Just to be there. In case the weather got bad or anything, but the weather was fine. Uh, so we did the VIP meet and greet and got to meet like AJ Styles and, and uh, Rob Van Dam and uh, ODB and Tara and well, Christopher Daniels. Got to it, it was a lot of fun and I, I really really uh, enjoyed it. Hold on, let me let me get the phone here real quick. <laughs> that was just nobody. Prank number. <laughs> anyway. It was fun going to uh, Bemidji for the first time for me in over a decade because I used to go there for my orthodontist appointments back in the day. But while we were waiting to fill some time, we stopped over at uh, Target over there and I picked up a couple things because I didn't want to spend too much on DVDs or Blu-rays because I, you know, I wanted to keep most of the money for the event that I had. But I went and I went to Target and I remember seeing some of the videos that Wet Movie 1 and Swap Beat Searcher were doing where they were going to Target and stuff, and they still had some good Black Friday deals here. You know, they didn't take their tags down. The first thing that I bought was City Slickers, a Blu-ray, and I gave my DVD uh, copy away for a Christmas present, but uh, to a friend. Anyway, I thought, well, you know, this was four fifty, and that was a hell of a good deal. I mean, I wish I could have bought more, but I, like I said, I wanted to save it for the wrestling event. But I think the biggest steal of them all, and not saying that I stole this because I didn't steal it, but I think, you know, they forgot to take down the, the sign because technically I think this was not the right price, although I got it for that price, and they even said that price, I couldn't believe it. Because, you know, the first thing, okay, I got the Harry Potter complete eight film set, which is cool because I wish it was a Blu-ray, but it's not, it's a DVD, and... I wasn't really going to buy the Harry Potter set. I've seen the set. I, I watched it all once. And, you know, I figured I'd be through with it. But with the price that I paid for this, I couldn't pass it up. But the thing that I was wondering, I was wondering about, you know, it didn't say if it was going to be in widescreen or full screen. You know how sometimes it is when you pay, if you don't pay attention to what you buy, and you buy it because you think it's a cheap price, you get like in full frame, you know, 4 by 3 Instead of 16 by 9 I mean, if you still have a 4x3 TV, God forbid, then I, then I guess you'd want to get in that type of format. But most of us now have widescreen TVs. Most of us do. Pretty much all of us do, I would say. Anyway, 
Well, this wasn't widescreen after I opened it, after I paid for it. But I, beforehand, I was just taking it a gamble. You know how much I, how much do you think I would have paid for this? I mean, how much do you think this this collection's worth? On Amazon, I saw it was like forty bucks, maybe about fifty bucks now. You know, might be cheaper for Christmas. I paid ten dollars for this, or I'm sorry, nine ninety nine. <laughs> All eight films, never been used, brand new copy, an eight film box set. For ten dollars of every Harry Potter film that's ever came out, from the very beginning to the very last one, that's a fucking steal. It's a nice box set and stuff, and yeah, ten dollars. I was like, no, I can't, because it was it was in the box set section that they had at Target next to like the Superman collection and Indiana Jones that were like sixty or seventy dollars. And then I come across Harry Potter, and I was like, this can't be ten bucks. So I went to check the price scanner, and surely enough, it was nine ninety nine. So I could pass it up. So I will eventually watch the Harry Potter series again, this time with my surround sound on, because I didn't have the good surround sound back when I watched it before. So, yeah. So I actually was smart, and I got a pretty good deal. I was pretty happy about that. But anyway, so I want to thank you guys personally, because this will probably be the last actual video video that I do this year, uh, because... I'm, like I said, I'm going to be focusing on interviews and stuff, and I don't know when the next video I'm going to make. I was going to make a Christmas video. I know uh, Robbie Webster wanted me to do another Christmas video like I did last year. I don't know yet if I'm going to do that, because uh, like I said, I mean, I'm I'm trying to just focus on interviews. But maybe if we, depends on how cool the gifts are, maybe if, if they're really cool, then I'll, I'll show them along. But the reason why I, I did a Christmas video last year was basically because I got a brand new camera. It was a widescreen camera, even though I still shoot in full frame just because, I don't know, it just doesn't take up that much time to upload then. But anyway, uh, I just want to say thank you personally from the bottom of my heart to, to everybody who I've chatted with online this year, whether it be on Facebook or YouTube, uh, whether you like me or whether you hate me or, or whether you love to hate me and hate to like me. Point is, you still watch me and I still watch you. And, you know, it's great. And thanks to everybody who's been a part of my life this year. I guarantee you next year I got some good plans, some good ideas for 2013. Not going to tell them what they are yet, besides the one moving to Grand Forks. That's the big part of it. But, uh, you know, also finding a new job and everything. Because eventually I will be part ways with the place that I work right now. Just because of politics and stuff like that. And because I need to, I need to move on. But anyway... I'm Frankie Slauson, and uh, we'll see you guys next year. <laughs> well, we got two big interviews coming up, or uh, at least I know one interview for sure will be coming up for by, uh, this uh, next Monday for Christmas. So, hope you guys tune in for that, and uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, it'll be a big surprise. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>